Education is what survives when what has been learned has been forgotten. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man to fish and you feed him for a lifetime. Education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world. A warm welcome to all of you to this virtual inaugural session for the online workshop on nuances in computational chemistry organized by the DG Vaishnav Chemical Society. It is a true fact that as prayer goes up, blessings come down. Let's listen to the play of our college prayer. Satyavratam Satyaparam Trisatyam Satyasya Yonim Nihitam Cha Satya Satyasya Satyam Dhuta Satya Netrum Satyatmakam Tvam Saranam Prapannaha Vani Gunanu Kathane Shravano Kathayam Hasto Chakarmasu Manastava Padayornaha Smrtyam Sirastava Nivasa Jagat Praname Drishtisatam Darshane Stubhavatta Noonam Namo Bhagavate Tasmai Krishnaya Dhuta Karumane Rupa Nama Vibhedena Rupa Nama Vibhedena Jagat Krida Tiyoyataha Om Shanti 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 May I now request Dr. K. Premalata, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Chemistry, D.G. Vaishnav College, to deliver the welcome address. Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Badrani Paschantu Ma Kaschittu Kabagbave Om Shanti 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 May all sentient beings be at peace. May no one suffer from illness. May all see what is auspicious. May no one suffer. Namaste and good morning to one and all. I am Dr. Premlata. Extremely happy to extend a warm welcome to you all to this four-day online workshop on the nuances in computational chemistry organized by the Department of Chemistry, DG Vaishnav College under the banner of DGVC Chemical Society. At the outset, I thank our management, our revered secretary and respected principal for their support and encouragement in all our academic efforts and endeavors. I am greatly honored to welcome our chief guest, Dr. Mangal Sundar Krishnan, Professor and Head, Department of Chemistry, IIT Madras, an eminent professor with profound knowledge in the field of theoretical chemistry. He did his undergraduation in St. Xavier College, Palamkote in 1977, and MSc Applied Chemistry in PhD College of Technology, Coimbatore in 1979. He obtained his PhD in Theoretical Chemistry from McGill University, Montreal, Canada in 1988 and Postdoctorate Research Fellow in Canada before returning to India as a faculty in IIT Madras. In addition, he is one of the founder coordinators of the NPTEL project and has been associated with it since 2001. His area of specialization and research includes theoretical molecular and magnetic resonance spectroscopy, quantum chemistry, and quantum information. He has published research articles in many international journals in several areas in theoretical chemistry. He has guided six PhD graduates and three PhD scholars currently in his group. I am extremely happy to welcome you, sir, and thank you wholeheartedly for accepting our invitation to deliver the keynote address today 
in a very short notice. Life is not about waiting for the storm to pass, but learning to dance in the rain. The pandemic has been something which none of us foresaw and nature has once again affirmed its presence and might to us. But with all of us in the lockdown, technology has come to our rescue and we have been seeing everyone get creative with their personal development programs. Online learning does not just happen. It requires careful planning and implementation. One of the most important areas we can develop as professionals is competence in accessing and sharing knowledge. I feel proud to state that this entire program is architectured and fabricated by our beloved outgoing students, Mr. L. Richardson and Mr. P. Karthik of 2nd MSc Chemistry, technically supported by Mr. Reis Ahmed of 2nd MSc Chemistry and Mr. Shanmugunathan of 3rd BSc Chemistry under the guidance of our faculty, Mr. A. Gopalakrishnan. I appreciate their tremendous efforts and dedication in this regard in bringing this four-day workshop a successful one. I wish to place on record that more than 750 participants have registered, which include faculty, students and research scholars. Thank you so much for your overwhelming response. This four-day workshop is aimed mainly on working with many available free software related to theoretical chemistry. I am confident that this workshop would definitely benefit you in your research work and future career. At this juncture, I wish to acknowledge the support rendered by all faculty members of our department whenever needed and a special mention to Mr. A. Gopalakrishnan, Dr. Sobhagalakshmi Prabha and Dr. R. Kumaran pertaining to this workshop. It is said that in learning you will teach and in teaching you will learn. Let us all enjoy the actual fervor of teaching learning phenomenon. Once again, I welcome you all to this four day online workshop and thank you. Thank you ma'am. Thank you for your kind words. May I now request our beloved principal Dr. R. Ganesan, DG of College to give the presidential address. Good morning. How are you all? Hope all of you are safe and healthy. It is now more than three months since lockdown came into existence. But I feel the academic spirit of our institution can never be locked up. As I have been seeing in the last one, one and a half months, a sequence of activities online. It is both webinars and online classes. Almost every department has conducted a webinar and online classes have also been going on. The Department of Chemistry has also conducted webinars and this is one such effort. You are going to be enlightened about uh, nuances of computational chemistry which will be helpful for the students and the faculty. I understand from the head of the department of chemistry that computational chemistry is a discipline that uh, touches upon almost all other sciences. This will definitely be helpful for research scholars. The four day event is going to deliberate several softwares involved in computational chemistry. And in some of the softwares you will even be given hands on experience. So you will get adequate exposure in handling these softwares. I appreciate the initiative by chemistry department to make the best use of the time that 
faculty and the students stay at home because of lockdown. And I definitely have to put on record that a four day workshop is a very, very useful exercise. And I appreciate the head of the department, the staff coordinator, Mr. Kopala Krishnan, and other staff members, and of course, definitely not the least, the student coordinators, as I have been uh, informed by the HOD, uh, put in a lot of effort in making the webinar possible. I hope all the four days will be very useful and you will have a lot of takeaways from this exercise. Thank you very much for having me, made me part of this. Stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your enthusiastic and kind words. May I now request Dr. Mangalasundar Krishnan, Professor and Head, Department of Chemistry, IIT Madras, to deliver the inaugural talk. Good morning to all of you from the DG Vaishnav College and also all those who have joined this program online who would uh, be going through a full session on computational chemistry, a program organized by the college. I am very thankful to the college uh, principal and the college chemistry department for inviting me to do a brief inauguration and also tell you uh, basic uh, ideas on computational chemistry. I am Mangala Sundar from the Chemistry Department of IIT Madras, and I would, uh, in the next 10 to 15 minutes, will introduce you to what, are, what we call as the fundamental principles, not in terms of mathematics, but in terms of the ideas of what quantum and computational chemistry are. So let me share the slides uh, with you. Quantum and computational chemistry, uh, at, uh, what I would like to do is to introduce to the atomic level understanding of physical, chemical, biological, and material systems. This is a very brief lecture. This is only telling you and over, giving you a very simple picture of what the subject is all about. What do we mean by quantum and computational chemistry? What do we study? Look at it carefully. Quantum chemistry is the mathematical study of uh, the atomic and molecular systems and ions using the principles of non-relativistic and relativistic quantum mechanics and where necessary even the principles of quantum electrodynamics but primarily it is a mathematical study and theoretical study of the atomic and molecular systems and therefore theoretical methods approximations algebraic and uh, uh, the exact theoretical methods all these things are the object of study of quantum chemistry and looking at the atomic or at the microscopic level description of molecular systems. Computational chemistry, on the other hand, is the application of these quantum chemical principles to do practical numerical calculations or computations in order to establish the properties of atoms, molecules, and ions. And we have to resort to what we call as the numerical methods in all of science, engineering, and uh, uh, technology. And some of these are fairly advanced numerical methods. And with the kind of computer hardware, the advanced hardware that we have today, and the software that we have using processors and also the algorithms and programs, this process of numerically arriving at the properties of atoms and molecules, the behavior of atoms and molecules in a simulation, in a chemical reaction, for example, or in an evolutionary process in time dynamics, such as in a protein system or a molecular system. All of this done with numerical methods is what we call as a computational chemistry. To understand quantum chemistry, of course, one must understand the principles of quantum mechanics. And one must understand the principles of quantum mechanics, not of isolated systems, but applied to atomic systems. 
And atomic systems obviously refer to the nuclei and the electrons, not necessarily the substructure of the nuclei or the substructure of the electrons. But at the chemical level, we are interested in the Coulombic interactions between the electrons and the nuclei. And this is largely studied using the Schrodinger equation and sometimes in the matrix formulation in the early days, but today largely also through the matrix mechanics that Werner Heisenberg and Max Born proposed. These are uh, implemented in quantum mechanics through what we call as the perturbation and variational theory methods, and which are approximation schemes for evaluating quantities analytically as well as numerically. All of you, when you study in quantum chemistry or when you will be studying quantum chemistry, you will see hydrogen atom in full glory. You will see the mathematics of hydrogen atom and in the absence of external and uh, magnetic and electric fields, that is it's a field free hydrogen atom, one electron system, which is exactly solvable through the application of the quantum mechanical equation, the Schrodinger equation, the time independent Schrodinger equation. And chemists often have studied the time independent Schrodinger equation solution of hydrogen atom using spherical coordinate system and you are all familiar with the way they draw the or visualize the atomic orbitals, the p orbitals having the lobes, two lobes, the d orbitals having the four lobes, and the f orbitals having six lobes, and so on. But all of these pictures are in what we call as the spherical coordinate system, assuming that the atom is approximately a sphere, and that the electron distribution happens around the sphere and away from the center of the sphere, leading to various nodes, the radial nodes and the angular nodes. All these things are exact solutions, but these are exact solutions for one electron at. There is no other some complexity. However, if you have to study even a simple atomic, atomic system such as helium or uh, the atoms with a higher atomic number, or if you have to study molecular system, simple molecular system such as homonuclear or heteronuclear diatomic molecules, triatomic molecules, or even a few atom polyatomic molecules, one must introduce what are called the linear superposition of the solutions of the atomic orbitals that you get from the hydrogen atom, or in a similar way, not from the hydrogen atom, but other such atomic, other such orbitals, mathematical functions. And these are introduced through what we call as the balance bond theory. I think you will look at the hydrogen molecule using the balance bond theory, as well as what we call as the molecular orbital theory, which is currently uh, very, very widely used. Both these theories use the fact that the atomic or the molecular orbital theory in particular uses the linear combination or linear superposition of the atomic orbitals to form molecular orbitals. However, these are all approximate solutions of the quantum mechanical equations, and exact solutions are not possible to obtain. Very highly accurate and numerically nearly exact solutions are possible using computational means. Some of the pioneers associated with this whole era of discovery and uh, examination, I have just given a few of them here and I will say one line about each of them. A lot is said about them and you can find almost uh, encyclopedic information on the Wikipedia and other resources. The pioneer who started the whole process of the atomic system as opposed to the classical mechanical methods until the 1900 was Max Planck who introduced the quantum of action, the Planck's constant, which was later referred to in honor of his discovery. And the Planck's constant he used to describe the energy transactions that the atomic systems have in the emission of radiation through the black body radiation phenomenon. There he introduced this discreteness in the transfer of energies through what is called the quantum of action. Uh, Albert Einstein extended this to the phenomenon of electromagnetic radiation interacting with matter. And in his photoelectric effect, he used the fact that light itself, he proposed that light itself consists of particle particles. I mean, they're, they're called the packets. Later, a chemist, uh, Gilbert Newton Lewis, called them as photons. But again, the description of a discreteness in the energy of uh, transaction 
was introduced by Albert Einstein for light. Together with Max Planck, they clearly uh, proved that the Planck's constant, that is the smallness of the constant, is extremely important at the atomic level. It was Niels Bohr who applied later, almost about seven, eight years later, the uh, idea of the Planck's constant and the quantization of the energies and angular momentum to study the hydrogen atom. And he was very successful in producing the atomic uh, emission spectra, the lines of a hydrogen atom. And he verified the, uh, the fundamental constant, the, the Rydberg constant, he gave a fundamental expression in terms of the atomic uh, properties. Arnold Sommerfeld extended the circular orbits that Niels Bohr came up with. But all of this is today referred to as the pre-quantum theories because they were extensions of simple ideas without a complete justification in terms of why the matter was the way uh, it, it is. The formal theory, mathematical theory of quantum mechanics started with the uh, theoretical details of Max Born and Werner Heisenberg in what they proposed as the matrix mechanics. And virtually within a year, it was uh, Erwin Schrodinger who came up with the wave mechanics, which I think today all of us study as the wave mechanics or the differential equation method, the wave equation method. These two together came up with these two independent methods of computing the atomic behavior, atomic structure and the spectra of the atoms. And Paul Dirac, later extended this using the relativistic principles to understand the electron spin. And he is considered to be one of the founding fathers. Almost all of these uh, people, Max Born, Heisenberg, Erwin Schrodinger, and Paul Dirac, they're all founding fathers of the quantum mechanics. Wolfgang Pauli came up with uh, a beautiful explanation, fundamental explanation of the electron spin. And he postulated, he postulated the electron spin properties through what is, what is known today as the Pauli's matrices and the Pauli later, the principle of uh, mutual exclusion or Pauli's exclusion principle for many electron systems. All of this is physics. However, it was Robert Oppenheimer under the direction of Professor Max Born who came up with the first real chemical application in deciding the the separability of the nuclear motion versus the electronic motion. And through their approximate method today, known as the Born Oppenheimer approximation, we were able to differentiate between electronic structure theories and the nuclear motion. And the nuclear motion is studied uh, generally through spectroscopy. And the electronic structure theory is studied using electronic spectra and through the potential energy surfaces that they came up with. The idea of chemistry, uh, chemical systems being studied by quantum mechanics was largely propelled by the discovery of Born and Oppenheimer. What Heitland and Fritz London came up with the first real calculation of the energies of the, uh, the electronic system for hydrogen molecule. And later, Douglas Hartree and Vladimir Fogg came up with a very, very fundamental principle in deciding what is known as the one electron wave function systems for which they came up with the model of what we call as today the self-consistent field theory. Hartree and Fock came up with the many electron system being the product of many one electron systems and to compute the one electron wave functions, they came up with this mean field theory or what is called the self-consistent field theory. Later, this was extended by uh, Slater and others. However, to extend these more uh, accurately to molecular system, Linus Pauling and Robert Mulliken today are sort of uh, uh, taken to be the leaders for the two different theoretical approaches in quantum chemistry, namely the valence bond theory and the molecular orbital theory. Uh, so Robert Mulliken, in addition to valence, the, in addition to the molecular orbital theory, also was the primary uh, force behind the use of computers for calculating the molecular properties. In the early 50s and 60s, he employed in the university in which he was a professor to have computer systems to compute molecular properties. And uh, the US computational facility in computational chemistry, the drive was largely due to Robert Mulliken.
And he's, of course, credited with the fundamental discovery of what we call as the molecular orbital theory or the LCAO method. Charles Coulson extended the numerical and calculational tools of computations uh, to molecular systems. And the fact that he did not win the Nobel Prize among all the others is, is of no consequence. His contribution in the uh, valence theory of the atomic of the molecular systems is fundamental, and so is uh, the contribution by John C. Slater, who came up with a series of orbitals, hydrogen atom-like orbitals, known as the Slater orbitals, which were fundamental entities for calculating the properties of molecular systems. The modern computational theory that we use for the last 15 to th almost 30 years is due to two individuals primarily and many of their collaborators, Professor John Popel, who came up with the principle of using Gaussian functions, that is uh, basically special types of functions. Uh, earlier, there was a scientist called Boyce who introduced the Gaussian function as one of the basis functions. Professor John Popel explored with this to study the molecular systems and the electronic integrals or the repulsion terms, the electron-electron repulsion terms, and various others. And in the process, he also introduced the numerical methods to such a level of uh, collaborative development that he founded the Gaussian, the company that we have today, which is basically selling us the software for computing molecular properties. The Gaussian was founded by him. The Gaussian was explicitly recognized in the Nobel Prize awarded to John Popel in 1998 as the contribution in bringing in numerical methods very effectively to the understanding of fundamental science. Walter Cohn, on the other hand, did not use these methods, but he, with his physics background, of course, he used, uh, he was the founder of the density functional theory in which he used the electron density as the fundamental entity. And he came up with uh, the mathematical tools and the mathematical methods to study molecular systems in which the inputs from what we know experimentally of simple molecules could be built up later as functionals to study the electron electron repulsion potentials and the density functional theory was founded by him with many others and of course he also shared the Nobel Prize in 1998 with John Popel. Today the Gaussian program and the other density functional theory programs are the most fundamentally uh, important programs for people to use and hundreds and thousands of scientists calculate atomic prop molecular properties using the software built by developed by you know, by the understanding of these principles as well as by a very large team of scientists okay now let me almost come to the conclusion computational chemistry at various levels uh, you can see from analytically accurate to numerical methods in microscopic simulations at various levels computational chemistry has different uh, uh, pictures and different names associated with it Ab initio, computational chemistry, if you think about it, the original methods of Hartree and Fock, the orbitals provided by Slater, and the basis set provided by Gaussian uh, and uh, by John Popel and others, his colleagues, known as the Gaussian orbitals. These are all wave function based methods. Then there are also semi empirical molecular mechanics which are used. Uh, which are calculated, I mean, which are calculations using approximate molecular potentials based on our understanding of the electrostatic forces in the molecules. We, we come up with some uh, basic forms for molecular potentials and we employ them to understand the dynamics of molecular systems. These are semi empirical methods. They are not ab initio, but they are very, very useful. Density functional theory, on the other hand, does not use the wave function process as much as the ab initio method uses, but it starts with electron density, and that's the basis of all the calculations. And density function theory today is now integrated formally with the ab initio, Hartree, Fock, and other methods into a computational package, which many of us should be able to use uh, with uh, simple details, but it's important to contribute to the calculations for which you have to understand the coding. These are the program codes today run into millions and millions of lines. Molecular dynamics at both the quantum as well as the classical level, and the mechanics of molecules for large molecules such as proteins, drugs, computational drug designs, material simulations, all these things are now part, 
parcel of computational chemistry at a much higher level of uh, approximation and uh, not as ab initio, but they are very useful to draw conclusions about the behavior of larger systems. Examples of, I just give you two examples relevant to today's topics, the nanotechnology and the nanomaterials and the nanoscience, the nanophysics, the nano, uh, all nanos started with this fundamental discovery of carbon 60, C60, the fullerene, buckman fullerene structure. And at that point of time, when computational chemistry uh, was developing with all the software, fullerene structure in 1985 was a challenge to understand using ab initio electronic structure theory. And this was later resolved. The electronic structure theory uh, did calculate all the energy levels and the vibrational modes and other things of fullerene fairly accurately. That was a, that's one of the uh, fundamental applications to build large scale systems through uh, exact methods and numerical methods. And today, the last slide, when we talk about the COVID virus and we are all stuck at home in order to avoid our being infected by the virus, a lot of the interactions of the COVID virus with the, uh, the proteins and uh, the, the bio systems are now being examined by many, many, many scientists very vigorously using computational tools, using quantum computational tools and molecular mechanics tools. So when I just clicked on the Google to see what is COVID virus through quantum chemical simulations and uh, chose the image format, you can see hundreds and thousands, hundreds and hundreds of uh, new uh, methods and people looking at it from various points of view. So in summary, what I would like to tell you is that the field and the area that you have decided to study today and uh, probably learn from other speakers is an extremely fundamental area for all of science, all of nature, and all of materials building. Therefore, I wish your conference all the best, all the success, and hope that you will be able to do similar such meetings in theme-wise and topic-wise exploration of all of science while you are forced to stay at home and study from home. Please use this opportunity to interact with the, the scientists and others through webinars and various methods. I wish you all the best. Thank you very much for inviting me and I hope that you will have a wonderful experience in going through the lesson today. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for bringing in the essence of computational chemistry with a brief introduction. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. May I now request Mr. A. Gopalakrishnan, sir, Assistant Professor of Chemistry, D.G. Vaishnav College, to brief about the workshop. Thank you, Richardson. Good morning, one and all. I am very happy to be the part of this workshop on nuances in computational chemistry. Before I start with, let me congratulate the masterminds behind this program. Yes, it was initiated by the students of DG Vaishnav College, primarily Richardson and uh, Karthik, and supported by Ray Sahamath and Shan Mohanadan. Okay, let's get into the topic, Computational Chemistry. Computational Chemistry is the branch of chemistry which interconnects mathematics physics, chemistry, and computers. Why do we need to learn computational chemistry? Yeah, some reactions are very difficult to carry out in laboratory. And some reactions are too expensive to carry out in laboratory. And some reactions, say nuclear reactions, are very dangerous to carry out in laboratory. The information about these reactions can be obtained through computational chemistry calculations. Okay, what we are going to learn in this uh, workshop. This workshop covers calculation of single point energy, geometry optimization, homo lomo energies of molecular orbitals, then spectral information such as uh, IR, UV, NMR, then uh, molecular interaction studies, that is uh, docking studies, and uh, other molecular properties. Let's make use of this opportunity to explore more on computational chemistry and I warmly welcome you all for attending this workshop. Thank you.
Thank you, sir, for giving a crisp of information about the workshop. So now let us hear and visualize about the four-day online workshop as a presentation compiled by L. Richardson, P. Karthik, and Rais Ahmed of D. G. Vaishnav College, MSc Chemistry students. Atoms, molecules, wave function, Schrodinger equation, von Oppenheimer approximation, quantum theories, vibration, orbitals, molecular energies. Oh, stop! I'm tired studying all the kind of stuff. Can you make it sound interesting? I'm done with the dark. Why not? Let's make it interesting. Oh, really? Then how? Let's explore by experimenting with our quantum mechanics. Wow, that's great. How are we going to start with it? I think you have a computer with a good processor and sufficient space too. Then come, here's what I found which would help us. Oh, yes, I can see it. The DG Vaishnav College presents a 4 day online workshop on nuances in computational chemistry organized by the DG Vaishnav Chemical Society. The workshop covers us the computation approaches for experimental chemists to do molecular modeling, visualizing spectral properties, experimenting the quantum mechanical concepts and calculations, scientific graphing and data analysis, and also the molecular docking for drug designing. Wow! Also, we can explore in computational chemistry by getting hands-on training in Avogadro, Gaussian, Gaussview, Mopac, Ozenlab, Plotly and Amcule. The workshop seems benefiting because they provide with us e-materials like handbooks, manuals, textbooks and research articles, which would help us enrich our knowledge in computational chemistry even after the 4-day workshop. Let's register. All we need to do is just sign in at ecamdgvc.learnworlds.com. You can also access through the workshop course module by clicking on to the link sent to your telegram that is ecamdgvc.weebly.com. You can find the day 1, day 2 and day 3 tabs available. Click on day 1 tab and you can find all the lectures available over here. Click on the lecture buttons given and you can access through the lectures and you can also access through the quiz, assignment and feedback provided in the day 1 web page. Thank you for your interest in taking part in the 4-day online workshop on nuances in computational chemistry organized by the DG Vaishnav Chemical Society. Happy learning! Thank you. That was a great presentation and wonderful to see to get a crisp of information about the workshop. Now it's time to draw a curtain to our inaugural session. May I now request Dr. L. Saubhagya Lakshmi Prabha Ma'am, Assistant Professor of Chemistry, DG Vaishnav College, to propose the vote of thanks. Good morning everyone. The Department of Chemistry, DG Vaishnav College, is pleased to inaugurate a four-day online workshop on the nuances in computational chemistry. The workshop is organized by the DG Vaishnav Chemical Society. We thank our revered secretary, Shri Ashok Kumar Mundraji, and our beloved principal, Dr. R. Ganesan, for encouraging us to conduct such online programs, which in a way would enlarge the knowledge of the students and participate in extracurricular activities to mold them as future leaders. While it was our practice to conduct such sessions on brick and mortar model, you all would agree that the present situation in the country, especially the pandemic prevalent at present, has enabled new opportunities and thoughts to conduct such programs on online basis involving social distancing. Our head of the department, Dr. K. Premalata, presented the welcome address and we need to thank her for the strain suffered in organizing the program at short notice and encouraging the faculty and the students in bringing out the program. We thank Sri A. Gopalakrishnan, our colleague, who took special efforts in charting the four-day program 
the modules on the different days and coordinating the posting of e-materials. The sessions are expected to be captivating and provide hands-on experience in solving the online quizzes which would widen the knowledge base of the students. We thank especially Dr. Mangala Sundar Krishna, Head Department of Chemistry, IIT Madras, who agreed to spare his valuable time and be the chief guest for the session, though he may be pressed with other engagements. It is a team effort and we thank all our colleagues in providing cooperation and making the event a grand success. Last but not least, we thank our student coordinators L. Richardson and P. Karthik who would be leaving the college on a successful note after completing post-graduation and for compiling the materials, designing the assessment to make the sessions interesting. We congratulate them for their sincere and dedicated efforts as student coordinators in organizing the online workshop. The students do have a bright future and we expect them to attain high positions in life. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. So hope you will all be enjoying the workshop program which will be held for the another four days. So wish you all the best and happy learning.